Paul Mesner, the popular campaign YouTuber, is a fraud. And in this video, I intend to expose him. But my question to Paul is, Paul, how do you sleep at night knowing that you make millions as a corporate shill? Well, millions. I look kind of angry. You look, you look angry at the camera and I'll be like, Paul Messner is one of the most popular wild camping YouTubers in the UK. He's got a gold plate at Hilleberg. And his videos have inspired countless people to take up the hobby. Well, how does it feel knowing that you are, in many ways, single-handedly responsible for an entire generation of middle-aged men who should know better <laughs> to going out and having the worst night of their lives on some wind-blasted, rain-driven, miserable hillside on the middle of nowhere when they could have been sitting at home in front of the TV enjoying a pie. And in this video, I wanted to get a few more insights from Paul. When I peed in it, it started dripping a little bit as I would sleep in bag. <laughs> <laughs> and to go along on a camp to one of Paul's favorite spots in the Peak District up on Kinder Scout. I've passed it so many times, but I can't see where I am at the uh -huh. minute. Paul Messner, the fraud, said he knew where we were going. I know where we're going. Let's go have an adventure and a lot of conversation. First of all, I sleep very well because I've got a decent sleeping pad and I wasn't paid millions to use them either. <laughs> In fact, I wasn't paid anything. They know that you quite often get helicoptered into your camping locations, but we're having to walk. Where up are we going? There. We're going up there, but we're waiting for the Sherpas to turn up to, okay. to, to come and help with some of this gear. Is that Andrew Beavers? Is he your <laughs> Sherpa? He's, he's already he's, up there. Already. He's already up. He's, he's prepped, prepped camp. We've got prime conditions for the ultimate video. We've got Halloween, we've got wind a bit coming later, rain and fog. Perfect for spooky. Something's bound to happen to us tonight. Is this Kinder? Is this Kinder Scout? What bit is Kinder Scout? When you get up to the plateau, you're on Kinder Scout. Okay. Right. I do have another question for you. The question is this: Is there a difference between the audience that you know you have and the audience you wish you had, or maybe maybe the audience you wish you had more of? It's very it's very tough question because if you thought that you had the perfect audience. Although I'm grateful of everybody that watches the videos, there'd be 160,000 views on every video. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously every video that I make doesn't suit everybody that subscribes, and I don't, I don't know who, who's who. I think sometimes someone will subscribe for one very particular thing that you've done once. Yes. And you might never do it again. Yeah. But they still, they still subscribe, but yeah, it's always tricky. And the whole thing about the audience isn't necessarily who you think it is. Like I find this with running videos. I do running videos. People, you, I think you've probably seen one of my running videos. I've seen lots of running videos. You don't run. No. There's loads of people who don't run, watch them. It's a weird thing. It's probably the same with your camping as well. There probably loads of people don't camp. They like the idea of it, but they're not actually yeah, I, I get, going. I get that quite a lot. There's a yeah. lot of people that, that have said, it doesn't matter what I make a film about, they will watch it. They'll watch it. And. There's some other people that say that they've got no interest in camping whatsoever, but they, they love watching somebody else do it. So it's just a, it's a strange one. You're in the lap of the gods, honestly, <laughs> honestly, when it comes to YouTube. Yeah. I don't think there's a, a mega formula unless it's a real clickbaity thing, you know, where you're gonna die or something. Yeah. I, I died on this camping <laughs> video. I think yeah. people like to watch other people suffer. Yes. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah, I think that's why so many people watch EastEnders. <laughs> yeah. The acting non, is terrible. The storylines are terrible, but everybody's miserable. Exactly. And as long as they're more miserable than you are, that makes you feel it a little does. bit better. Yeah. So that sums up an audience. Exactly, yeah. So some, <laughs> some of them are there because they like you. Some of them are there because they just want to see you suffer. There we go. <laughs> yeah, all right. Up we go. This is us up on the NAB. I've got another question for you, Paul. Okay. How does it feel knowing that you single-handedly have massively lowered the standards for what a steak cooked on a camp looks like? Because last time we went camping, you cooked a steak 
and it was grey. It looked it looked like it had been pickled in formaldehyde. It looked like something you'd get from a biology lab. To, to be fair, my tent was pitched to the swimming pool. <laughs> That's true. What? I got into trouble for cooking you that steak. Okay. And the camp before, I'd taken Joe out, and she got a boil in the bag, <laughs> something or other, and you got fillet steak. So she was, well, let's say, a little bit unimpressed with me. You didn't complain. You ate it. Okay, yeah, I didn't complain. At, at, the, at the time. Yeah. I didn't complain at the time because I was hoping you'd give me a shout out in your video. I didn't want to, <laughs> want to ruin my chances. <laughs> is that a train? It is, yeah. Boop, boop. Two trains. Ooh. Look like they're about to crash from the, uh, and that the is perspective. How that is how the B roll is done. I don't bother with none of that stuff. <laughs> you need the, watch the videos. cinematic movement. us on our way up. Whistling Tom. No, jumping Jack. What was it? Pete? Uh, burping Bobby. Burping Bobby. Uh, ringing Roger. Ringing. Ringing Roger. There you go, ringing Roger. Is that the Welsh pronunciation? It's the Welsh, the Welsh pronunciation. Do you know what? I've I've been in Wales so little that last time I was there, I was in a shop, and I thought two women were spitting at each other, but they were just speaking Welsh because I could hear all this coming from the next aisle, and then I realised, no, no, it's just Welsh. So far up here is reminding me of two places from home, the Morn Mountains. The Glens of Andrum mashed them together. That's kind of, kind of what you've got. Except everybody talks funny. You're saying everyone from around here talks funny. <laughs> yeah, you still don't know how to say the. Yeah. Uh, it's like, pass me, pass me to cup. Do you want to cup? Want a cup of tea? You'll say words like, rind. Like what? Rind the corner. We're going rind the corner. Rind the corner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, rind is not a word. Rind is a word. Rind is what's on bacon, I think, isn't it? That's rind. Oh, not the same thing. No. <laughs> Normally the view from up here is stunning. <laughs> right, right, describe for me what I should be able to see right now. In vivid detail. Oh, vivid. Vivid detail. You can vividly see. Yeah. The Vale of Edel below. All along there you've got the Great Ridge with Mam Tor. Yeah. Uh, along the ridge to Back Tor. Loose Hill over there. Grindsbrook over there. Yeah. Golden Clough over here. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, you described it so well, I don't even need to see it for myself. So, like, well, it's the world's worst cave. <laughs> It looks like Ringing Roger's eye socket. Yeah, there we go. There, this is the skull of Ringing Roger. One eyeball, second eyeball. It's been Actually, you know what? You know, oh. <laughs> I got that on camera. <laughs> Do you know what that looks like? It looks like ET, sideways. <laughs> okay. Ringing Roger was actually um, a relative of, of ET. Landed on this mountain a long, long time ago. Tripped and fell and became fossilised and his two eyeballs rolled out of his head and they they formed the Edial Valley This is phenomenal content by the way <laughs> <laughs> A seal, here's his fin or maybe it's a, maybe a turtle, maybe a sea turtle Could be This looks a little bit like uh, yeah, tall, don't you? It's even, there's even something in it well, This is the Plastic things with like <laughs> Yeah, they stop the spray back. Yeah, it needs it needs one of the little yellow kecks, isn't it? Who, who invented them? They must have made it. I don't know. This is the world's most difficult to use urinal. How do I get down? 
Paul keeps checking his map and saying things like, everything looks the same in the fog. I think we might be lost. I've passed it so many times, but I can't see where I am at the uh -huh. minute. See? Paul Messner, the fraud, said he knew where we were going. I know where we're going. <laughs> I probably should address the, uh, the elephant in the room, which was me accusing Paul of being a fraud. <laughs> I suppose the thinking behind it was, I think pretty much everybody who makes videos about something they're passionate about online eventually realizes that there are a lot of people out there who consider you to be an expert and it's not necessarily even how you feel about it yourself. And sometimes, can that make you feel like a little bit of a fraud? Maybe. What do you think? <laughs> do you ever feel like, you ever feel like people have their expectations are too high or, or or they see you as more of an expert than you see yourself yeah i think sometimes you know it's i know what i know and I, i've used lots of kit and i've tested lots of kit and i know how that works for me but you know i'm not bear grills or i'm not ray mears when, oh, when it comes to knowledge wise i just i know a fair bit but i don't don't have all the answers and sometimes people think that you know everything like just a, a normal bloke like the rest of the people that's watching these videos and i think that's the biggest thing you can take out of it is you need to do your own research have a look at people mm. and get a good idea but you need to do your research yeah it's a bit like i would get a lot of requests and people asking me you know where is that wild camping spot and and sometimes i think well i don't think i think part of the fun is learning it yourself Rather than just taking the shortcut and having somebody tell you. So what's it, you just got? You just got a text message from your Sherpa giving you the pin. Exactly. I'm just double checking, but I did say it was here, didn't I? Come on. <laughs> he's, not, he's not having it. Such such a fraud, Paul Mesner. You've been doing all your camping videos in green screen this entire time. We're now 45 minutes from sunset. It's starting to get dark. The mist is closing in. It's Halloween night. I'm pretty sure I heard a howl up on top of the mirrors. And Paul still doesn't know where we are. <laughs> it's, the it's just over here. It's the hind of the Baskervilles. It wasn't Pete this It was Dartmoor, I think. Yeah. The, the hound, the kinder hound. The kinder hound. The hound There's of kinder. Panther. The kinder oh, panther. We've got a big cat somewhere up here. Right, the kinder panther. Yeah. I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night having my, my toes being chewed off by some jaguar. <laughs> so that's concerning. I've just found these giant claw marks on this rock. I mean, that looks like some kind of big paw has like... It's the Kinder Panther. Massacre. Oh dear. Something has been eaten here. This is just more evidence of the Kinder Panther. <laughs> that looks fresh as well, doesn't it? So we're camping right next to a chewed on carcass. Hoping that whatever chewed on it doesn't return during the night. Okay, let's take a little tour of the campsite because Paul brought a tarp which has made this a lot more interesting than I was expecting. What do you see this? So, here we go, we've got Paul's tent is over here, my tent is over there and in the middle we've got this this tarp set up with these two. You know, it looks like we're about to shoot some kind of game show in here. Tonight, I'm going to be attempting to cook my dinner using this little one cup wonder. This is actually an updated version of the one cup wonder. If you watch my previous video or a couple of videos back, 
you'll see the video I made talking about how amazing this was. I think I may have made a mistake because I found a way of making this even smaller and even lighter. I have a little homemade windshield. Got a spoon and two pieces. I've got a bottle of alcohol with a dropper on the top so I can um, dispense it. I've got a lighter. I have a tiny pot stand and I've got this. This is the Speedster stove, 25 millimeter stove. Never used it before and decided for the first time I'm gonna use it when I really need it to work on this camp. Well, I'm predicting that's going to take 20 minutes to boil that. How much fuel have you got? Enough. Yeah. One eternity later. There we go. Finally. Finally, it's boiling. No regrets. How long did that take? About a month. About a month. <laughs> it was about, okay. It's about 15. Well, no, it's November the 4th now. <laughs> Been sitting here through four days. So I'm having my coffee and I'll put another one on and I'll I'll cook my meal. If I cook my meal, I mean I'm gonna pour some boiling water in a plastic bag, eat my food out of it, and then later I'll probably pee in the same bag. I've done that many times. Yeah, well Although you, it's difficult in the little tents. Little tent, yeah. I'm letting out secrets here, but <laughs> I did once get a I didn't want to get out of the tent, it was terrible outside, and I only had a Ziploc bag. <laughs> So what I did was I, I got the Ziploc bag and I blew in it just to make sure that it was all it was airtight. airtight. But then when I peed in it, it started dripping a little bit. And so my sleeping bag got, <laughs> <laughs> let's say it got a, a little bit. I was rushing about trying to get the, get it out of the tent. Was it a dying sleeping bag? It was, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could just left it and then every time you used it, it would just be... Yeah, a reminder of... You've got a sock problem in your van, haven't you, where you leave things? I think I maybe dropped an old sock down under one of the seats or something, because just every now and then, when the heating's on, <laughs> there's, just, there's just this little whiff of like old sock goes past. So put yeah, Maybe Louise has picked one up off the bedroom floor or something and just yeah. shoved it in the heater. Do you know what I do? I sometimes hide my socks inside her pillowcase. Is she watching this video? And then... <laughs> I know, she finds him in the morning and she's furious. Yeah. I'd be divorced <laughs> if I did that to Joe. She's fairly angry. Yeah, I just kind of slide him in under the pillow. So I'm sort of lying there giggling. <laughs> I know, that's where the socks are. Paul here, I think, is going to shoot a little bit more of a conversation. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to hopefully film a podcast. Po podcast? A podcast this evening. It's going to be audio only or audio I'm and gonna video? I'm going to put it on video. It won't, it's, gonna, it's not going to go on my main channel. It's going to go on the second channel. And then I'm going to convert it to audio and just see how it goes on your Spotify's or whatever else you put podcasts on. I don't even know how to do it yet. I'm just going to record it and then work out how to upload it after that. Paul's Pod? Paul's Pod. Are you going to call it Paul's Pod? I'm not going to call eh, I'm not going to call it Paul's Pod, no. What are you going to call it? I'm not thought that far ahead either. What do you think Paul's Podcast should be? Pulse pod, mess, Mesner's messages. Moan with Mesner. Moan with Mesner. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. This brought a flipping table and everything. <laughs> Even got a blowtorch from the marshmallows in a bit, look. You know what, I like, I think I like this little table the most. Oh, it's a piece of engineering artwork. It's just like flip, flip. What's in your menu? Two little venison steaks. Mush Ooh. Mushrooms, asparagus. That's it. Venison sticks were they deer? Um, <laughs> you've stolen my joke. <laughs> I was gonna tell a joke about the four legs of deer. Look, this is what this this is what this smock's Look, designed yeah, I've, for. I've got exactly the same one. Oh, no, I haven't. I wanted that one. I've got the Velas <laughs> Adventure. Right I like. It. I'm still Not forming an one. opinion on it. I've had loads loads of people messaging me about this, asking for my opinions on it. I find that. Do you ever find? Literally, as soon as you show something new, even if you just got it, I immediately get messages. 
What do you think of it? What do you yeah. think of it? What do you think of it? Is it any good? It's like, I haven't used it yet. I need to go out, test it in anger, test it in all conditions, and then I have an informed, informed opinion. Until there, I'm just kind of, you know. Just winging it. Winging it. Well, Paul has cooked his venison. That looks like an excellently cooked piece of meat. Right, the pudding is in the taste, or the taste is in the... The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> It's chewier than. It's very chewy, but it's soft and chewy. Yeah. It's like meaty chewing gum. Get one more while you can. I just swallowed it. I figured my digestive system can deal with it if my teeth can't. One day I'll cook him something that's all right. Why did you look over there? Did you see something? But, no, no, no. Maybe. What's the, the, the kin panther. The kinder panther. Yeah. Did you bring bags of sweets for the knick knockers coming around? There's no um, no sweets, I'm afraid. Mm. I have to cut down, haven't I? Do you know that term, knick knocking? Knick knocking? Yeah. Nah. It's like trick or treating. It's a both, knick knocking could, could happen at Halloween or not. If it happened at Halloween, you stayed until the door was answered. Okay. But you can knick knock any time of the year, which is you rang the doorbell and you ran off. Ah, uh, yeah. That was um, knock a door run when we were kids. Knock a door run. Knock a door run. It's very literal. <laughs> exactly. But you knew what I meant straight away, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. That's like some German words. <laughs> it's like the German word for diarrhea, which is one of the only German words I know, is Durchfall. Yeah. Which means to fall through. Okay. Which is a very apt description. I should probably apologise to my mother in law. Sorry, <laughs> Hazel. Too much information. Too much information. Are you recording now? Oh, yeah, so it is. Yeah. Yeah, you've got some chit chat to stick some in Some chit chat, yeah. What I'll do now is I'll cut to those shots I got earlier from way yep. over there, and then I'll just sort of fade the black. Yeah. And then it'll be the next morning. Yep. I've got a little bit of a puddle on my on my footprint. If I push here, there it is. So, really, what I've done is I've made myself a waterbed. So I slept last night better than I thought I was going to. It did rain, and as you can hear, it has been raining the entire night. But it's not been super super heavy. It's just been constant. Oh yeah, Paul's tarp, tarp ripped. About an hour ago I heard this, whoop! And I thought, well, he was eating some strange things for his dinner last night, but it turns out his tarp ripped in the wind. So he's been out there complaining about the tarp. So if you want to hear Paul complain about the tarp, go and watch his video, which I'm sure will be titled, This Tarp Is Useless Source, <laughs> or something like that. Because I nearly died because it ripped. Yeah, it nearly. My tarp ripped. I nearly died. <laughs> Worst night ever. Try this breakfast. This is a baked apple porridge. Ah, finally. This is why I came all the way to the Peak District to see. I think I can fix it. <laughs> this bit. I think this bit goes on here. Or here. Actually, I think it goes on there. There we go. Couple of paracetamol. <laughs> you got a couple of, couple of paracetamol. A little bit of germaline. It'll be all right in the morning. Santa's come out just in time for me to 
enjoy my porridge. Oh yes, it looks much nicer with sunlight on it. Yeah. Right, well, that's me done with camping in the Peak District. Time to pack up. <laughs> Time to go. Should I bring my new, my new friend with me? No, it's a, it's a bit. It's a little bit gross. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll prop it up somewhere. So the next people that come along here are like, what? There we go. That doesn't look at all traumatic. There we go. I can just about see the van. We're nearly back down. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out Paul's videos and his podcast. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye, she. Bye. Well, that, that wasn't supposed to happen. I've uh, left Paul behind and I'm running on ahead because um, if I don't run on ahead, I'm going to have a, a bathroom emergency in the next five minutes. Ooh. That porridge was delicious, but oh, I need to hurry up. Don't put yourself, don't put yourself, don't put yourself, don't put yourself, don't put yourself. Don't put yourself.